mean, you know, I, I would always prefer to play to a smaller crowd. Uh, festivals are great, but you have to dumb everything down because the typical festival goer is not really a music connoisseur. So when you play in a smaller club, you have people who are a bit more savvy to the music and, you know, are a bit more adventurous and tolerant. So you can kind of go a little wild in a club atmosphere. But, I mean, I, that's how I came up. I mean, I came up from, you know, being in kind of small, underground, illegal situations. So it's, uh, you know, smaller the better. Well, I mean, you know, a, a lot of it has to do with the city itself. I mean, you know, if I'm playing at a house club in Amsterdam, then I'm going to play really deep. You know, I mean, if I'm going to play at Electric Daisy Carnival, I'm not. So, I mean, it's, you know, it, it's really, it has everything to do with where it is. And I think I've, you know, I've been around the world enough to kind of have things dialed. And plus there's, you know, now that we have our USB keys, there's always those in case of emergency break glass folders for whatever situation could come up. I was just recently in Jakarta and Kuala Lumpur, and I'd never been to either place and had no idea what I was stepping into. But it's funny, everyone's listening to the same music. I mean, you know, now that there's an internet, I mean, there's really not a lot. With the exception of the Melbourne scene, which is quite, like, unique and has, like, a sound, the rest of the world's all listening to the same music. It's pretty wild. I mean, like, you know, you can play the same set in Portland, that you could play in Hong Kong and people still know the words to the records. That's pretty weird. It's pretty awesome actually. There's no bubble. There's no ceiling. I mean, this has been a long time coming. The whole rest of the world has been enjoying the music that this country created in the 80s. You know, Detroit created techno, Chicago created house music. And all of Europe and the rest of the world, this has been pop music in every other country in the world except for this one for 20 years. And, you know, as of about four years ago, David Guetta and the Black Eyed Peas was probably the moment for America. That was the first, like, proper EDM record to make it to the radio. And we're only four years in here. Just kind of embarrassing to the rest of the world. They think we're nuts because, like, They've been doing it forever, but we're babies, and this is just getting started. And the best way I've heard it put, my lawyer has a 16-year-old son. He's been skating for the last four years with his friends, listening to Skrillex and Datsik and Excision. And he's 16 now. He's two years away from being able to go to EDC or any of the festivals. And he's five years away from being able to go to a club. Now flip that and go to the kids who are 12 now, who for the last four years have been listening to Geta and the Peas and LMFAO and Calvin Harris on the radio. They're fully indoctrinated in this and they're 12 years old. So they're six years away from being able to go to a festival and they're nine years away from being able to go to clubs. That doesn't sound like anything that's going to expire anytime soon to me. And we're building an army. I mean, that's really what's happening right now. I mean, this music is only just starting to get big. And there, there are companies that are here from Europe that aren't even throwing anything in 2013. They're just waiting. They're just sitting back and watching. And next year, when the real big stuff is going to go down and things are going to start to tour and you're going to see things instead of five cities there'll be ten and there'll be all these you know every festival that's that goes on anywhere in the world will come to america because we're ready for it and there's no amount i mean edc could happen in every single city in america and they'd all still sell out there would be no end to that and i think it's great I mean, it's, you know, all the rock guys and all the, like, you know, everyone who used to give us all shit about it, like, they're the ones who are paying $100 to get into nightclubs now. But, you know, as they should. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's good to see it really does bring everybody together. Yeah. It does.
Dioro, I mean, I think that he's going to be massive, and he already is, but I mean, you know, he's 21 years old, huge, just saw Will Sparks play Pasha in New York, totally rocked the crowd, he's 20, I mean, it's mental, I mean, this kid's from Melbourne, Australia, like, you know, headlining a New York nightclub, unreal, you know what I mean, like, but, you know, I, I think I've been working with a lot of really great guys. I think the Disco Fries, this is their year. Um, Live City, the guys I work with in New York, like, they're primed for a very, very big next year. I mean, we've had a big year this year, remixing, you know, Martin Solvig and Mount Eden and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, I, I think that there's so much talent in this music and I think that it all comes down to a very simple point art throughout all time has always been made best in the midst of chaos and this country is fucked and the art that is going to come from this country falling apart is going to be glorious and it's already happening. And this is what our music is really all about. It's the soundtrack to the end of the world. A little bit of walk around, um, ate dinner from the, the food carts, and got a little bit of a feel. I mean, as much as you can get in like a late afternoon, but it's pretty amazing. It's like, if you took San Francisco and Seattle, I should get all up together. That's what it kind of seems like to me.